Alpha 3.22 was just released to Wave 1 PTU last night, and there is a lot of information on features that were previously confirmed, but also a few changes to events and additions to reputation and pledge store items that will be revealing. Now some leaks were also in the files that some data miners found, but I'll be sure to annotate any leaks with an asterisk. Structural salvage is finally coming to the game. With this massive change, we can now fracture off parts of a ship and grind them up into a new resource called Construction Components, adding in even more depth to the salvage gameplay loop. Now in this current build, the Reclaimer's Claw is currently not working, but we can expect to possibly see it working once it comes to live. Essentially how salvage will work going forward, you'll strip the hull of a ship completely, then fracture off pieces of a ship, and finish it off by grinding the parts into construction components and storing them on your ship. If you bypass stripping the hull of the ship, you will lose out on all the RMC you could gather from stripping the hull. All of this is an amazing change to the game and finally adds a reason for the Reclaimer to have someone in the co-pilot seat who will operate the claw during the final step in salvage. I look forward to when they add even more reasons for crews to have a dedicated co-pilot. If you love hearing about Star Citizen leaks and news as much as I do, what's next should be pretty exciting to you. So you should hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on more news and gameplay like what's coming up. Join the community and let's hit 1000 subscribers together before the end of the year. According to some of the data files, there have been rumors of a new Mirai grav bike called the Pulse. Could this be what we saw during CitizenCon when they showed off the 10 new ships coming over the next year? A lot of players seem to think so, and I have to agree. What are your thoughts about this rumor? Let me know in the comments below. There was also information found on a new vehicle, the Grey Cat Cav. And while I can't show you a picture of this vehicle, I encourage you to check out the Star Citizen Leaks Discord if you want to see what it looks like. The cloud, fog, and lighting improvements are also rumored to be coming in 3.22 as well. However, as I mentioned before, this has yet to be added to the roadmap, so this may not make it in. This uses temporal upscaling, similar to how Microsoft Flight Simulator renders its clouds, which should possibly increase performance and the quality of clouds. I understand how a lot of players can be frustrated with the gritty quality of the current clouds in the game. Let's hope we see this in the next patch to further enhance the visuals. Now a lot of us know that the new hair models will make it into 322, but I know many of us, myself included, did not expect hair physics to also be added in addition to some new great hairstyles. We'll see how quickly they add more hairstyles to the character customizer as time goes on, but I expect they'll be adding them more often after more developers transition fully over from Squadron 42 to Star Citizen. A new leak with massive implications that almost no one expected was the possibility for players to recover lost or stolen subscriber and pledge items like armor, weapons, and other items. The last that many of us heard about insurance of these items was a little while ago, and CIG said they weren't actively working on it and seemed as if they weren't concerned with it. I guess after potentially a lot of feedback about it, they finally changed their minds and decided to work on it. This is a very welcome change that will make many players happy. As we previously discussed in another video, Arena Commander Multicrew is finally coming with 322 as well, and this brings a great addition to the game that allows us to test the large ships in a closed environment. Now while I don't expect this to bring a lot of players to this game mode until they possibly introduce an experimental mode with engineering, it does open the door for them to add it in the future. They're also adding the ability to ban players, promote players to moderator, or even demote and promote a player to host, giving us more control over Arena Commander. But this is where things might get crazy. As we already know, the Idris exterior has been in the game for some time now, but the entire interior of the Idris hasn't been found in the game files. Until now? Data miners have been combing through the files and found the Idris interior is fully in the files, which begs the question. Could they possibly use Arena Commander to allow players the chance to fly and fight with an Idris in the patch? No one really knows except CIG, but I think it could be a possibility. What are your thoughts about this? Leave a comment below. The new Jean ship weapon Yang 2 is also being added to 322 for the Santok Yai, which will give the ship a unique edge which is a size 3 laser repeater. This might also give us the potential to place it on other ships like the Kartual and Su Lin. We'll see once it's in our hands. Reputation has been a major point of contention for a lot of us. We know it exists, and we know where we're at with it. But in its current state, it doesn't matter as much as we want it to, and many players want it to matter a lot more. According to some of these leaks, some items require your reputation to be at a certain level to buy them, 
This is a great change to reputation that gives players something to work towards as they play. Now this information was found within the game files, so this is still unofficial, but could this be the beginning of many changes to reputation that we've been needing for years? I think we're all hoping that this is the beginning of some meaningful change. We've discussed derelict settlements several times in previous videos, and we know that they're coming for 322, adding in new and unique combat areas and social areas for players to explore and fight in that are different than the run-of-the-mill habs we're used to seeing. In the future, these will potentially add great locations to grab items and quests, and to head out on foot or in a ground vehicle and explore the planet. Finally, several locations are being moved around in Stanton, starting with Jumptown being moved from Yella to Daymar, Paradise Cove moving from Lyria to Walla, and Raven's Roost moving from Calliope to Microtech. Minor changes, but could bring some different and unique moments to make things new. Now, at the time of recording this video, patch 3.22 was released to the PTU, so I will be hopping online to check it out. With all of this so far confirmed for 322, many players are wondering if there are any other updates that CIG has up their sleeves. Could we possibly see them add other features to the patch? At this point, I believe that most of the features that they've confirmed and that we've seen in the PTU are locked in, and it's unlikely that other features would be added. But once CIG returns from their usual holiday vacation, we may see some major roadmap updates and more information on the team transitioning to focus on Star Citizen. I know a lot of players look forward to seeing what's in store for us next year. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. And if you'd like to see more Star Citizen news and gameplay, check out these videos and subscribe for more so you don't miss out on any future videos. Happy holidays to all of you, and we'll see you in the next video. Have a go.